This is uh, the first uh, in uh, the series of uh, tech talks that we're doing, so um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, let's see. So the topic is clouds and how to use them in automation. A uh, little bit on the agenda side is uh, what I would like to present is a little bit what is a cloud, what type of clouds are there, and uh, who and what does the clouds offer, and how can we work with the clouds. Um, so what is happening is that the world is getting more and increasingly connected, and uh, so is uh, also the industrial world. So you, we see that the more machines are being connected. Um, we are monitoring the energy consumptions. And also, I think that the, some of you also have some sort of gadget at home, which is monitoring uh, the uh, thermostat or, uh, and the temperature at home. And, uh, and also, we see that the, the uh, uh, things are being connected like a cars. So how? The, why are we doing this? And the, the main reason for this is to increase the product, uh, productivity and the sustain, sustainability. And uh, within uh, within the uh, uh, manufacturing industry. And uh, so what we do is uh, we uh, have these machines. And previously, what we said was that okay, we would like to increase our productivity and sustainability by 10%. What we would then do is we would buy faster machines. Uh, what we try to do now is to actually uh, utilize the same type of machines, but utilizing some sort of IT or IoT tools uh, to create these types of uh, uh, services like smart operation, uh, smart maintenance, and so on. And to do that, we are utilizing various types of uh, cloud technologies and uh, to and with this trying to create various types of uh, services on top of that, uh, such as uh, product of, uh, optimization, uh, condition-based monitoring, remote services, and create some sort of uh, sustainability and more uh, efficient solutions. And at the end, some smart industries. When talking to uh, companies and uh, why uh, and the type of benefits they see with the connecting things, the major majority of them says that it's to reduce costs, and, uh, but also to improve operational efficiency, uptime, and availability, and also to be able to produce maybe more uh, machines or more uh, things that they are doing but also as a way to get the information back and improve the product quality. So when we're talking about it, to be able to do these uh, types of uh, uh, services and uh, take the benefits uh, of uh, industrial IoT, we always refer to clouds. So what is a cloud? Uh, pretty much we could say that we've been using clouds since the 1970s, and uh, we have, uh, at that time, we were using these big, large mainframes, and companies would then rent computation power um, to do some uh, sort of data processing. Uh, in the 80s and the 90s, then uh, the, uh, with the getting the PC, um, then more companies would then uh, uh, take back that sort of uh, processing uh, of data in-house. In uh, but as we have seen with the uh, evolution of the internet and the much faster networks, the uh, companies are again starting to uh, sort of outsource these types of uh, computation power, so basically to reduce uh, the uh, investments of buying expensive hardware. and. Uh, uh, and maintaining that. So uh, what we usually call a cloud is pretty much an IoT platform, is another word for it, you could say. And looking at then what the, 
what it consists of, uh, an IoT cloud platform, uh, you'd say it's the hardware, the servers, the computers that is uh, uh, usually installed in a data center of some sort. Uh, you have some sort of communication uh, bit to get that uh, data uh, into the uh, systems. Uh, and also you have some sort of operating system as a software backend, uh, which is then uh, managing the, the communication part. And then on top of that, you're building some sort of application to manage the data, which is coming out from the various types of machines. Wrapped around this wheel uh, is uh, the security aspect. So you have some sort of user authentication authorization and also a sort of transport security on how to get that data into the cloud uh, in a secure ma manner. Uh, also, when we are talking about clouds, we usually talk about the different types of architecture models. Uh, and the ones that are the most common one is uh, the on-premise one. And that is pretty much what uh, one would refer to that you're managing the whole uh, infrastructure yourself. And so that is uh, the networking, the uh, the hardware, you manage the operating systems, the data storage, and the applications. So all that is uh, done uh, on premise in your own location, so to speak. Uh, with the clouds, we are uh, something which is quite common referred to is the infrastructure as a service. And that is pretty much that you take the hardware part and you uh, outsource that and you manage that in some sort of data center. So the hardware is uh, installed on the data center, but you still have the responsibility to do the uh, selecting your operating system that uh, this uh, uh, application is going to run to, uh, run on, and also the storage of the data. So you have still quite a lot of responsibility to manage that. Uh, then the next step would be a platform as a service. Here you see that the, uh, the increase in what is uh, cloud managed. And uh, here you have the responsibility of data storage and the development of the applications. And, uh, and the last part would then be where the whole solution will be cloud managed and be offered as what is called software as a service. And this is quite common. So if you're looking at the various types of uh, uh, applications like uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or, and things like that, that would be software as a service uh, applications. Uh, and they will be using these uh, type of architecture models. So examples of this would be uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, and uh, Amazon Web Services would be examples of the infrastructure as a service. Uh, you would have manufacturers, for instance, like GE or Siemens, who will be uh, building on top of this in, uh, infrastructure uh, their applications. And uh, I would also say that HMS uh, Talk to M Cloud is a platform as a service. Uh, another example would be the HMS NetBite Argos. I would see that uh, as a software as a service uh, type of model. Uh, so this is the architecture models that we, uh, are quite common, but the, how are they, they then deployed? Usually you talk about three different types of models where, where you talk about deployment, one which would be the private, public, and hybrid. Uh, the private is pretty much, uh, that does not mean that you have it on premise. It could be uh, installed in a data center, but it's uh, exclusively targeted to one specific uh, customer or company uh, or entity. And here you have the, uh, you're still running pretty much uh, the responsibility yourself uh, with the cloud provider. Um, the downside to this is that you have the investment and maintenance costs, uh, which is, uh, uh, one part that you need to consider and managing. The public cloud um, is um, where you share the infrastructure with other customers. And here you have some ben uh, benefits with the scalability. You, it's uh, um, much uh, with as a pay-as-you-go model, so to speak. 
Um, the downside to that is the lack of transparency. You don't have the same transparency of what is going on in the public cloud. You are mainly managing the, your own applications in this. And the hybrid, which is uh, a mix where you can then transport data between a private cloud and a public cloud. And here is maybe that you need to do some extra computation or your internal resources that do not, uh, um, you, uh, you don't have them. So you can then utilize the public uh, uh, cloud to uh, manage these sort of spikes, which is then sometimes called cloud bursting. Looking a little bit more into the details of what uh, the various types of parts, which are uh, the building blocks inside um, an IT cloud platform, you will then have some sort of uh, connectivity uh, interface where you get the data into and uh, or uh, recipient, and that uh, that data will usually be uh, managed either through MQTT or OPC UA, so you will have an interface to manage that type of protocols. Um, then you, uh, one part would be the device management, where you uh, have uh, some sort of functionality to be able to update remote devices uh, over the air, or be able to push for a new firmware version, or managing the various types of uh, uh, devices that you have uh, in, the, uh, in the field. Uh, another one would be the process and action management, where you have some sort of action rule engine that is uh, that uh, creates events based on the data which is coming in, so alarm notifications, for instance. And uh, the next layer would then be the uh, data visualization, where you would have some sort of dashboards and or, uh, or the uh, possibility to control the devices from the cloud. There are also uh, some other uh, device, um, modules which are or building blocks within the um, IoT platform, uh, which some platforms have, which is the tools. So you have some sort of uh, built-in IDE. You can maybe create your own application on top of that uh, platform. And you can also have some sort of analytic uh, uh, modules or um, building blocks to create uh, artificial intelligence or uh, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality uh, parts, so you have some advanced the calculations that uh, uh, modules that you can utilize. And most uh, of these IoT platforms also have some sort of external interfaces where you can connect these clouds to other clouds or to some uh, uh, other internal uh, or external systems like uh, CRM systems or ERP or uh, MES systems. All that data that is then collected is uh, then uh, stored somewhere. And when we are talking about the data, um, we, uh, something, it's usually referred to the four Vs, uh, types of data. And that is the volume, the variety, the velocity, and the veracity uh, of data, which is managed inside an uh, IT platform. So uh, cloud platform, you need to be able to manage the amount of data from the devices. And as we're getting more devices connected, the more data will then be uh, have to be managed by the IoT platform. Uh, we also talk about the variety of data, so different types of sensors and different types of uh, controllers or actuators will then produce different types of uh, data uh, formats. And so you need to be able to manage that inside a cloud platform as well. Uh, we're also talking about velocity, and with velocity we mean the the speed uh, and uh, that the data is generated or is consumed needs to be consumed by the uh, uh, platform. And this could be, for instance, a vision system that is sending images that needs to be processed. And we also have uh, the veracity of data. So this means the uh, that sometimes sensors uh, that are being installed in the field are maybe uh, uh, sends out some uh, data which is not correct or ambiguous data which is uh, needs to be managed in some way. And uh, so here the uh, IT platform needs to have some sort of signal validation system uh, in place. So looking at how, how we get the data into the cloud, and uh, so 
most of the uh, cloud platforms require some sort of IP, uh, TCP IP based uh, protocols to get the data into the clouds. And uh, so we need to have some sort of gateways that converts these non IP based uh, data. So that could be from, for instance, from a sensor which uh, or some serial interface on a PLC or uh, Bluetooth or something like uh, similar and then convert that into uh, protocols like AMQP, MQTT, uh, or some uh, HTTPS communication into the platform. Uh, what the, a lot of manufacturers in the automation industry are also implementing is OPC UA and MQTT directly into the various types of devices. And uh, also a common way to communicate between the various types of platform is using HTTPS and some sort of API between those two uh, clouds. Um, what is also is happening now is that uh, we see the trends where we have this, uh, uh, these uh, technologies which are being used in the cloud being moved into the more closer to where the data is being produced into the edge. And so here we see also that the uh, we are doing more computation inside the edge that could be either inside a specific sensor or inside an edge gateway and so on. And that is mainly due to that we have uh, need to manage latency within those types of systems. So an example of this would be if you have a, uh, a car that needs to break, you don't want that uh, message to be managed in the cloud. You need to have that uh, decision being uh, made in, in the car at the edge. Uh, and uh, so this is one part of uh, how, uh, where we see the trends where you, uh, data is being pushed more into the, uh, into the edge. And also the various types of communication uh, methods to push data up to the clouds are being, uh, uh, we see an increase in that. So how uh, clouds and IoT platforms and automation? Um, today, there are about 450 different types of IoT platforms. And uh, about a one third of those ones are actually in the uh, focusing on manufacturing and industrial applications. And uh, today there is a quite a large growth. Uh, the expect, uh, expected growth is about 39% per year. Um, in terms of utilizing uh, uh, IT platforms. And um, while this is quite a big number, uh, there are some uh, players which are more common than others. So today, we, uh, there are, uh, you could, uh, some of the most common ones that we have today is Microsoft Azure, uh, AVS, uh, Amazon Web Services. We have the Google Cloud. We have applications like uh, ThingWorks, Predix, and uh, Siemens MindSphere. And as you see in this uh, slide, you, you see that the, the common thing here is that the, most of them are uh, utilizing uh, OPC UA or MQTT as the way to get the data from the field into those clouds. Uh, they're also, in some cases, that they provide software agents which are implemented inside the devices. Uh, or gateways, sensors or gateways. And uh, also that some of these are uh, quite only cloud-based, uh, while some of them can also be installed on premise or in a private cloud uh, sort of environment. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick overview of some of these clouds that uh, are quite common. And what we see here is, uh, for instance, uh, and the benefits that one can have with, with utilizing them, is that uh, with Microsoft Azure, which is uh, quite popular, uh, we get the data into the, uh, to the Microsoft uh, platform uh, utilizing MQTT or CUA, either as a software agent built into the sensors or as an external gateway and then be able to utilize the various types of services which are offered on the Microsoft Azure. And as most of us are using some sort of uh, Office 365 or some uh, 
other type of uh, service or application from Microsoft, we can still get um, remote data into those applications as well. So we can um, have reporting through Power BI, for instance. We can do some uh, event uh, analysis, event uh, actions on the data that we receive in, and also utilizing the uh, Active Directory for managing users, for instance. So, and also a lot of these integrations into backend systems and ERP systems, as I mentioned earlier. Um, AVS is pretty similar to uh, Microsoft uh, Azure as well. The big challenge here is that there is a lot of different types of services uh, which are pretty much the same, but they are called differently. So the, the uh, feature that you will find in Microsoft Azure, you will most likely find it in uh, Amazon as well. Uh, example of this is where you have something which is called a digital twin. It's called device shadow in, uh, in AVS. And um, so this is uh, 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 Microsoft Azure and uh, Amazon Web Services are maybe the two, uh, are the two biggest ones on the market today. Uh, but also you have players like uh, PTC and uh, their uh, application uh, ThingWorks where they are more targeting uh, vertical applications uh, uh, such as industrial applications, uh, smart city. Uh, so they create sort of templates uh, to be able to manage those types of uh, markets. And uh, with ThingWorks, uh, we, uh, PDC also owns uh, a software called Kepware, and, uh, which is a PC-based solution which then uh, is uh, able to integrate on the factory floor various types of industrial protocols and push that data directly from these uh, devices up to the ThingWorks platform. And the ThingWorks is also big on doing these uh, augmented reality uh, uh, visualization of data and integrations into uh, other types of uh, systems. So ThingWorks is more of an end-to-end -end solution. One uh, that I would like to mention is also my, uh, Siemens MindSphere. And uh, Siemens MindSphere is uh, an open uh, platform. So what the Siemens here is, uh, as the, one of the major players within the automation business, is trying to create is an open platform for uh, customers which are utilizing Siemens products, but also getting other types of uh, parties to create various types of applications on their uh, platform, or uh, and also uh, be able to resell that type of services on top of the uh, Siemens MindSphere platform. Uh, Siemens in themselves, they uh, uh, are offering various types of hardware gateways to connect to various types of devices in the field and be able to push that into uh, to their platform. And also the Siemens uh, MindSphere is then also hosted on uh, uh, Microsoft Azure's uh, infrastructure. Here is a little bit quick overview uh, of the MindSphere architecture. As you can see, there are quite a lot of similarities between the various types of uh, architectures. So here you have, for instance, uh, specific applications for, for, uh, that uh, they are trying to create for vertical markets, such as food and beverage, oil and gas, or within the automotive industry. And you have various types of services to be able to create predictive maintenance, condition-based monitoring, and also having some sort of analysis tools for signal validation, uh, alarm management, and so on. So I would like to finish up this uh, presentation here, uh, which is a little bit that the, the IT companies today, such as Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, are providing uh, the majority of the cloud ho uh, hosting today and the infrastructure expertise. Then you have companies like Siemens within the uh, automation industry, which are then building their application on top of uh, the uh, uh, Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft platforms to then be able to offer various types of services. So they are offering the uh, domain expertise, and they're also developing uh, maybe specific vertical market solutions. 
Uh, OPC UA and MQTT is uh, the big communication methods that we see today uh, to getting data from the devices to the clouds. And uh, a lot of these automation companies today are building various types of uh, uh, applications on the cloud, mainly to uh, accommodate their current products uh, and their current customers. So, uh, Mike, um, Siemens Mindsphere is maybe the, a little bit the exception here, where they also try to get in more third-party um, uh, uh, partners to be able to help them out to develop their uh, platform. So, if one is uh, to uh, cons uh, think about and consider if selecting a cloud platform is uh, the uh, scalability of that platform, the reliability, what is the uptime, the possibility to do some customization, maybe uh, white labeling, but also looking at the, uh, the hardware and the cloud agnostics, so are you able to move the data or how are you able to manage the, that data? And of course, security is a big part of uh, when hosting data in, in clouds. You need to make sure that uh, the security part is uh, a big, it's uh, relevant and uh, being managed in a proper way by these uh, clouds.